Hey guys, I uh, thought that uh, would be useful guide also to share uh, what I think is the ideal uh, general path when you start the game. And of course, the path depends if you want to spend some money or not. Okay? No, I normally buy one general from the in-app. So that would be the first step if you're willing to. I, you can check my video on the premium general to choose. For me, the best general is this guy, Richard I. I'll explain why many times, but he's definitely the starting point. Richard, you put Knight Templar, 20% more damage. Immortality level 10, you're grading. He's already, he has a, a Lieutenant 3 title. And then he has the Emperor, which is the maximum title. And, uh, well, I, you see that he starts with the 50 cavalry. But if you go into my headquarter, first you see he has the three Knights Templar, which are the best unit in the game. And then you see his 50 become already 93. He has an easier horse. He has a unique equipment, <clears throat> the Immortality. You can enhance it over time with his Mithril. And you get already the general skill Polar Mastery plus one. The next I get one more a point for the cavalry tactician, is already level five, and so on. So it's really the best starting point. Then I will go with uh, Valens, this guy. is available immediately. It costs uh, medals. If I remember, it's like 1,300 medals. Silver general, good range. In, and it's important you set your the ranking of your general. So for each uh, military type, cavalry, infantry, and range, select your top three generals. You may have even four, and then you get a lots of uh, useless free generals during the game. But at least you should have at least three good ones per specialty. So, so for me, in cavalry, number one is the Richard. And so Valence is for me actually my number four archer or range general. So that reminds me not to spend too much money. But of course, when you start the game, it's your number one because the others are available later on. So that's the second general you should get, the Valence. This range, he has already a king title, which is very high. Its rank I agreed to lieutenant first. He has... Um, two uh, skills for archers, and then with the weapon, you see the archer goes to 62, which is not bad. Number three, Etius. Etius you get him from free. He's also a silver general, infantry, and you see with, the, with all the augmentation, his uh, infantry skill got to 54. He has a counter-infantry expert, so that's good to put him, force march. And then I put him with the uh, Refined Imperial Broadsword, which gives me a 10 point and infantry capability. And uh, um, Caesar uh, unique equipment. Now, to get Caesar, you really need to pay a lot of money, so I'm not sure I will ever have it. So for now, Etius is taking the weapon. So Etius is my third infantry general, but again, as you start, it's very useful. The number four is Belisarius. Belisarius is the, I think, the best infantry general, if you screw the in up players. And so he's my number one infantry. It's free, he's available after you complete the rise of uh, Byzantium. Uh, and he has also the special skill with the Legion Spearman. And if you saw my unit, uh, analysis, the Legion Spearman is uh, the number two unit, so that's very good. It's important the generals which have this uh, special uh, um, skill check, but although some of them, be careful because they are attached to very crappy uh, skills, like uh, Robin Hood <laughs> is attached to these uh, barbarians, which are the worst uh, archers in the game. Okay, so by the way, Belisarius, let's upgrade him to king, live. So now he's an emperor, so he has a very nice damage output. Look at that. 
Infantry 74 with the infantry technician skill and also you spend less money to recruit and a little uh, perk in uh, administration although it's not a strong suit. Then number five I got I, I'm not sure I would recommend this but number five I got Robin Hood. I was more doing a test because I was looking in the, let me show you, in the Triumphs. Uh, there is this medal recharge. I was wondering where it was, so I purchased for one dollar 250 medals and I got Robin Hood. So honestly, for 250 medals, even if you're paying for it, it may be worth because it's a decent gold in general. Uh, he has the special skill which boosts all these general skills. Unfortunately, the bonus is with the Ward Raider, which is the worst uh, archer unit in the game. And so then you question the value. But excluded that, he has a still a solid 38 in infantry with the range tactician master shooter. A master of archery. So these are still good skills. One dollar, if you're willing to chip in, you get immediately the guy. It's available immediately. You just pay the dollar in the triumph, and that's yours. So that's my number five. Then number six, I've been debating a lot. Eventually, I netted out to go out with Roland. You see, I have 2010 medals, and it costs 2015. So tomorrow is mine. Why Roland? Again, I always check who has the special skill. He has, uh, with the Durendal, it's a magic sword. He has 20% uh, in additional damage when he's leading speed cavalry. So I check in my unit database, and the speed cavalry is very good. He's the third best charge cavalry in the game. After the Tonic Knights, and uh, sorry, melee cavalry after the Tonic Knights and War Elephant. So it's uh, it's worth uh, having it. His uh, cavalry score 33, but he has only Brigade Commander, so easy to upgrade, and which means when you upgrade the rank, you can then get capability points and boost the cavalry score. And then he has a cavalry tactician and Master Sorber. So if you put a Master Sorber on a melee cavalry, it applies as well. So that's my sixth uh, general. I also take into account when the general unlocks. Then my number seven, maybe it's too late, is Justinian. Justinian it will also be my number two, uh, while Roland is my number two cavalry after Richard, and uh, Robin Hood is my number three range, which you are above. Justinian is my number two range. So he's better than Robin Hood because he has, first of all, a huge administration, a 42 score with lobbyists and logistics. So when you play Conquest, these skills really can make a difference. And also great, Seed Master and Rage Tactician, these are good status skills. But watch out the price, insufficient medals, is very expensive. Also, the other issue is that Justinian is uh, maximized by the heavy armor assault cavalry, which is a very poor range uh, unit. You know, in my database, if you look at the video with the review, they are the sixth out of eight units into the range cavalry. Very poor with an attack of 71. So why would you do that? Said that, again, grade 39, with the range tactician and they were the siege master. So still a good uh, um, general, and I rank it at number two, I think uh, slightly above uh, Robin Hood. Then number eight is a bit peculiar choice. I selected the Narses. Narses will be my third cavalry general after Roland. And the main reason I pick Narses is uh, the bond. That's not James Bond, but the bond means that if you have both generals in this pair, 
depending on their <clears throat> rank, you get these benefits. So if you have a Justinian and Theodora, and assuming Justinian is a rear captain, you get every round two extra points in technology. If it's a Centurion 3, you get a six iron every round. And if it's a general, you get a silver, 10 points of silver every round. In my case, I am Belisarius. If I get Narses, who is a decent cavalry, I'm going to get, with the general level, I'm going to get counter infantry plus 10, counter counter infantry, damage of counter infantry plus 10, and defense of counter infantry plus 10. All three, if you have the general number one. So that's, that's the only couple I recommend because the Theodora sucks, and I don't remember even when she unlocks. Arthur, you have to pay real money. Um, the Viking, uh, they're not very good generals. The Crescent Moon, you need to purchase Saladin. Wolf of the Step, these are a good trio. These are all three great generals, but they're available late in the game. So I would love to have them, and then Range Cavalry, though. Not my key unit, and then I have my key unit, which is Richard. So I may consider purchasing Philip and Frederick just to get the triad and to get this benefit. But <clears throat> Frederick is available later in the game in the expensive. And then you have the three Edward. That's really their name for the infantry. So uh, up to you. Depending on which is your core general, you may have, for example, Saladin, then in that case, Zenki and Nuradin are not so good generals, it may be worth. For me, as I said, my number eight general is Narses. He still is a good cavalry, he only has 31, which is not huge. Then he has cavalry tactician, plus formation and force march. He's just a brigade commander, so we can upgrade and increase the cavalry capability. And with the items, so he will still deliver a good general. He also is crown prince with a 12% uh, uh, multiplier for damage given, 16 for damage received. And overall, also the other skill is not too bad. Okay, and that's why I said he's my third general, 1,825 medals. But the, for me, the big thing is the bonus of Belisarius counter infantry, which really pays back. Number nine is my second infantry general. He will unlock Etius, so will take his role as number two. His name is uh, Heraclius. There you go. Heraclius has uh, it's great melee infantry. See, think about this. I always recommend to specialize your general. Don't mix the troops like the AI. If the guy is best at melee infantry, just put the three melee infantry units. And ideally, in your army, it would be good to have one general, which is a counter infantry, and one melee infantry. Likewise, one charge cavalry and one melee cavalry. So there's something to consider when you create your roster of generals. Okay, so he is a melee cavalry, a melee cavalry expert. Master Sorman, which also is a melee cavalry skill. And then he has also some decent administration score with lobbyist and uh, engineering for defending a city. So he's my number nine. And uh, last, my number ten, uh, which always will also be my top range general, is Genghis Khan. There you go. Genghis Khan is a fantastic archer. Probably it's uh, the best if I exclude the in up generals. And uh, even even if you compare with the in up, he has a, a score, a total score of 272 against Attila 282 and Saladin 257. But a special score of 91, which is higher than Attila and Saladin. Its range score is 45, Saladin is only 41, Attila 50, of course. Um, and yeah, his title is not very high, but you can invest in and upgrade him. But look at his skill, range tactician, master of archery. That's very good. And also good administration uh, skills. 
So, but uh, the problem with Genghis, he unlocks after uh, uh, the beginning of chapter nine. So it's quite late in the game. And so that's why he's my number 10. So if I recap, I have 10 generals with uh, um, four generals in range, in archery, let's call it. Number one being uh, Genghis Khan. Number two is... Uh, um, Justinian. Number three, Robin Hood. Number four, Valens. In uh, infantry, my number one is Belisarius. Number two is Heracles. Number three, Etius, who is free. And in cavalry, number one, Richard. Number two, Roland, number three, Narcissus. And then during the game, you unlock a lot of free generals. Most of them are worth crap. It's still worth to upgrade them to a certain level because as you upgrade generals, you accumulate uh, points. Um, and also will help you when you do the daily quest because the daily quest with more general, you can do them faster. So that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please click like. And if you didn't subscribe to my channel, I encourage you to do so because I, have, I upload a lot of videos. Uh, every day you get three European War 7 videos, plus still one video of War Conqueror 4. I almost finished the game with a Frontier mode and one video of Great Conqueror Rome. Take care.